Brave Red, Smart Frog, a new book of old tales by Emily Jenkins, illustrated by Rowan Daniel Eason. The Frog Prince. There was once a princess, young enough to play with toys, but old enough to think about marriage. This is not a long period in a person's life, and it makes her feel uncomfortable. She is not a child, but not all the way grown up either. This princess, Crystal, was beautiful to most people's way of thinking, except for those people who see beauty in character. In character, she was flawed. She had too many pretty dresses, too many pairs of shoes. She had too many curls in her hair, too many roses in her cheeks, too many chocolates before dinner, too many ladies in waiting instead of friends. Even worse, Crystal had too few occupations and too few real conversations. The ladies in waiting agreed with whatever she said. They did whatever she wanted to do. Yes, princess, of course, princess. And you know best, princess, all day long. Crystal was fretful and spoiled, spiteful and desperately lonely. One day, tired of trying on clothes and eating chocolates, Crystal took her favorite golden ball out to the castle grounds. She could have forced some member of the castle staff to play with her, but a game never feels the same when people are paid to play it with you. The golden ball had been a gift from her mother when she was young. Her mother was dead, and Crystal missed her dearly. This day, Crystal walked to the top of a hill and tossed the ball high, admiring its golden shine against the blue sky before she caught it again. On the third toss, however, she missed her catch, and the ball bounced down the hill at high speed. Crystal chased it. The ball bounced down through the rose garden and then through the vegetable garden at the back of the castle kitchen. Then it kept on downhill, shining merrily until it landed in the well at the base of an herb garden. Out of breath, the princess leaned over and looked at the water. It was very, very deep. She lowered the bucket into the well and raised it again, hoping to retrieve the ball. Only water. She lowered it again and again and again. Only water. Now, in the way of princesses who are not used to solving their own problems, and of girls who have lost their mothers, and of girls who are young enough to play with toys but old enough to think about marriage, Crystal sobbed bitterly. She leaned her cheek against the cold stone of the well. I would give anything if only I could have my ball back. Anything? A frog had spoken. It was moss green and as big as Crystal's head. Its eyes goggled out of its body. Its strange dry lips were curled in something that might have been a smile. In other words, the frog was of surpassing ugliness to everyone. That is, except for those who see beauty in character. Crystal jumped back in surprise and disgust. Where did you come from? From the well, answered the frog. Did I scare you? No, I think I did. No, you jumped back. You did not scare me, slimy thing. The frog drew itself up. I'm not slimy. Touch me. You'll see. No, try it. I will not. I'm dry. Just use one little finger you don't much care about. Never, not ever. Your loss, said the frog. Why should I care if a dairy maid feels my skin? I'm not a dairy maid. Pardon me, said the frog. A kitchen maid. Sure as sure, I am the princess. Sure as sure, nothing said the frog. Here you are in the herb garden. The bottom of your dress is covered in mud and your face is puffy. I'm no noodle. A princess is clean and doesn't let her nose run without finding a handkerchief. There was nothing Crystal could say to that. She dug in her pocket, found a handkerchief and wiped her nose. I lost my ball down the well, she told the frog. I'll give anything to get it back. Anything? Anything, Crystal nodded. Well, what you have to give is considerable, if you really are the princess, said the frog. I am the princess.
Maybe. She flicked him with her finger. I am. You know it. Only maybe. She flicked him again. You touched me, croaked the frog gleefully. You said never, not ever, and you still, you touched me. Only to flick you, said Crystal. The frog turned around and hopped along the edge of the well. You don't want me to get your ball for you then. But I do, Crystal followed him. Pretty please, my warty friend, get it for me. I promise I'll reward you however you please. The frog disappeared down the well in a series of long hops, his suckered feet sticking to the stone. After some time, he reappeared, holding the golden ball in his lipless mouth. You've slimed it, said the princess, taking it from him. Then she ran away laughing, with never a thought of keeping her promise. That night, Crystal had dinner with her father, the king. As usual, they sat at either end of a long table in an enormous hall. They ate from silver plates and drank from golden goblets. Crystal told her father about the ball and the frog. But after that, there wasn't much to say. There never was. After the servants cleared the plates and set down dessert of strawberries and cake, a rap sounded at the door that opened on the kitchen garden. Crystal went to it, and there sat the frog, round as a donut and ten times the size. He hopped into the dining hall and over to the princess's chair. Lift me up. I'm not lifting you up. You came to dinner uninvited. I did you a kindness. You owe me a reward. You left without paying it, said the frog. Lift me up. Crystal reached down and grabbed the dry, but definitely warty frog underneath the belly. She hoisted him up and set him on the table. This is the frog who helped me get my ball back, she explained to her father. He's come to claim his reward. If you promised a reward, you must pay it, said the king. What does he want? I want only this, said the frog to Crystal. To eat with you at your table and to sleep with you on your pillow. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Ask for diamonds. What would I do with diamonds? Then ask for riches. What would I do with riches? Then ask for a pond. A pond with lily pads and a thousand thanks, said Crystal. I do not want a pond, said the frog. I want company. You do not. I do. If he will not take diamonds or riches or a pond, then you must pay the reward he asks, said the king. You just want to slime up my table, said Crystal to the frog. You want to get your horrendous froggy tongue all over my slice of cake. A little cake would be nice, thank you, said the frog. You can put some here in that saucer for me. Then you won't get my frog germs. I still have to look at you, said Crystal. But she cut a generous slice of the cake, put it on the saucer, and added several strawberries. The frog shoved his face into the cake and ate everything with enthusiasm, even the little green leaves of the strawberries. Crystal, who was used to formal table manners, found herself smiling. They talked about stories she'd read and adventures he'd had, about cake and music and bird songs. That night, the frog slept on Crystal's pillow. Stop breathing, said she. You're breathing too loud. You stop breathing. No, you. No, you. Ugh, you smell like a frog, she complained. You smell like a human, he complained right back. And your hair takes up too much room on the pillow. At least I'm not bald and warty. I'm good looking to other frogs, said the frog. Other frogs find me very attractive. Why are you even here then? Why would you want to be here with me? It's chilly out, said the frog. There's nobody to talk to. And with that, the two of them went to sleep. The next morning, when Crystal awoke, the frog was nowhere to be found. She spent the day with her ladies-in-waiting, trying on dresses, being measured for dresses, 
trying on jewels and slippers and hats. It was, yes, princess, of course, princess, and you know best, princess, all day long. When she arrived in the grand hall for dinner with her father, Crystal looked eagerly for the frog. He was not there. You have paid your debt to him, said the king, so he has gone back to his mud hole. At this, the princess felt heavy and sorry for herself. The meat tasted like cardboard. The roasted apples were sour. The potatoes dry and mealy. She thought of the frog with cake on his bloated froggy face and felt that dinner with her father was even duller than a day with her ladies in waiting. She jumped as soon as she heard a knock at the door. And when she saw the frog upon the doorstep, She picked him up gleefully and kissed him on his dry, bald, warty, froggy head. She was so very glad to see him. Now, some kisses break enchantments, and other kisses begin them. Crystal's kiss was the first kind, not the second. As soon as her lips touched the frog, he wrenched out of her hands, and before he hit the ground, he was transformed. Before her stood a tall, broad-shouldered man, just a little older than herself, not froggy in the least, though his large, warm eyes looked familiar. It was the frog himself, and Crystal felt both surprised and unsurprised, as if she had known there was magic of this sort of work all along. "'I want only this,' he said, "'to eat with you at your table and to sleep with you on your pillow.'" You just want to slime up my table, said Crystal. You want to get your horrendous froggy tongue all over my slice of cake. I have a normal human tongue now, he said. And while it's true I'm fond of cake, I'm fonder by far of you. Cheeky, scolded Crystal. But she smiled as she led the way to the table and offered him a chair. Cake was served, the two of them devoured it in big, joyful mouthfuls, and then asked for seconds. The young man told Crystal and her father his story. Years ago, he had been prince of a neighboring kingdom. He had angered an ill-tempered witch, and she had punished him by turning him into a frog. A frog he had remained for a good long time, knowing that the only thing that could break his enchantment was true love's kiss but never dreaming he would find it. You think I love you then, said Crystal. We only met yesterday. I know you love me, said the prince, laughing. If you didn't love me, I would still be a frog. Oh, all right, it's true, but don't gloat about it. It's disgusting, said the princess, putting her hand on his. He stopped her mouth with a second kiss, and after that, They married and spent their hours talking and laughing and teasing each other, only quarreling now and then to keep the days from seeming dull.